wreaths are one of the most simple and easy wreaths that you can make. However, they can be very intimidating for beginners. I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial exactly how to make this very wreath in just a matter of minutes with a few simple supplies. I'm Stephanie from Gathered in the Kitchen and I'm excited that you're here to join me with this tutorial today. Let's get started and make sure you stick around to the end so you can see all of my tips and tricks as well as how to tuck your tails at the very end. Let's get started. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started here with our burlap bubble wreath using a really simple and easy method to create a beautiful wreath. So what you're gonna need, we have a 20 inch uh, floral wire wreath form, which I actually purchased from Hobby Lobby. It was $3.99, but if you use coupons, it's even cheaper. We have um, a roll of burlap, which I've actually got mine unwound right now, um, but I bought this from Walmart and it is five and a half inches wide this way by 30 feet long. So it's a really big roll. Um, you purchase it in the craft section. Then I also have some scissors just in case we end up needing to cut this burlap. And then for embellishments, we can use things such as this big letter, um, which I purchased at Michael's uh, and painted. It's great because it has this hanging little hook thing here. And then I can use floral wire to attach it to my wire wreath form hook my hook right there and attach it. You can also use flowers of any color just to decorate. Um, typically what I like to do with wreath is just to do a cluster of, let's see where you guys can see this, a cluster of floral um, just in one section and then the rest would be all burlap. Um, I just think it looks a little more elegant that way. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is just untwist some of this burlap. And the only reason it's unwound right now is because I was using it for a different wreath and just have this extra. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. The, you can rip off this uh, tag if you want to or just leave it on. I'm gonna start in a different section. So there are sections of wreath that you see where there are lines, metal lines, that come across the circles. So there are four circles. But basically the way to think of this is three sections. So where you can put your finger, one, two, three. And we're gonna be making burlap loops or bubbles through each section. So to begin, you take your burlap. It doesn't have, it's okay if it's fraying, all of this stuff. I'll show you how to tuck tails at the very end. Do not worry about your tails right now. And we're going to put our hand underneath the burlap like this and take your finger, this finger is what I always use, my pointer finger, and just push to pull up. And I'm going to form a bubble or a loop, however you want to think of it. So it'll look like that. I've got extra hanging off. Always leave about three, four inches, and I promise I'll show you how to tuck all of that at the end. And then what you're gonna do is as you're working your way, this is gonna get tight, and you're gonna form your really nice, beautiful wreath loops. So, the next thing to do, so it looks like this. So you see it's like basically a loop coming up. Make it as big or small as you'd like. I'm going to make mine probably about a one and a half inch size loop, maybe one and a half to two. Then the next thing is take your, I'm using my middle finger, just to push the burlap up through that next one. Pull, make sure the, bubble or the loop is about the same size as my other loops. If you need to move them to make this first one smaller or the second one smaller, whatever, you can do that. These are really easy to still maneuver. Then we're going, just get that in there a little better. Then we do the third uh, section, just up, pull it up. And then now you've got these three loops coming up. Now they're real loose right now because I don't have any more filling in this other section, like this thing over here. So what we're gonna do is take this, we're gonna just come back up over, under, I mean, on the wreath, and just start all over. Start pushing up. On that outer loop, outer circle loop, come to the middle, do that one. And then the outer, or the 
inside on this case. So you just pull your loops. Then you just fluff them to make sure they are the size that you want them to be. And like I said, you can still maneuver these really easily as you're going along. So I want to just go ahead and make sure they look about right before I move along. You can do, I'm only going to do two sections, two sections of three on each little section of the wire wreath form, just because I know if I do three, I won't have enough to make it around this 20 inch loop. So let's keep going. We're gonna just move on to the next section. There's nothing special that you have to do between these sections. You just keep on moving. So up through this one, the outer, up through the middle, and up through the inside. There's that. And just fluff as you go, like I said. Just keep on going. Just, you just repeat the process. Now, there are several different ways to make burlap bubble wreaths. That's what I call them. If you search over on gatheredinthekitchen.com, my blog, you will see several different tutorials. You'll see tutorials even from years ago of wreaths I've made uh, over the years using burlap and the different te techniques I teach um, each time. So one of the wreaths, one of the very first ones I ever did, that's actually with push pins and on a foam wreath form rather than a metal wreath form. And that wreath I still have hanging up in my house. Um, it was made over seven years ago now. <laughs> and it's still one of my most favorite wreaths. I just absolutely love it. Um, it has been moved from different states. Our movers came, packed it up, put it in a box, and shipped it, and it still looks as good as new. So if you search over on Gathered in the Kitchen for a bubble wreath, um, bubble burlap wreath or bubble, yeah, bu burlap bubble wreath, you'll find it and be able to see that tutorial as well. There's also a lot of other great tutorials for like coffee filter wreaths, uh, plastic egg wreaths for Easter, tulip wreaths for uh, spring, lots of things. I love wreaths. I think they are such a great way to spruce up your curb appeal and make your home feel way more inviting. Um, it's great because you can change them out easily, especially if you're doing a burlap wreath like this, change out your flowers or your decor on the inside of it uh, for the holidays. Use the same wreath and just change it out for either the holidays or the seasons. I will say one thing with the burlap is um, it can become sun faded or tinted. If you're using a lighter color burlap, so there is like a really pretty white color, I have used that in the past. Um, that becomes a little more yellow over time just because of the sun. Now my front door gets tons and tons of sun. It's, it becomes actually so hot you can't touch the front door. Um, but uh, even though that happens, the wreath so was great and the burlap held up, it just was color tinted to yellow. So just be aware of that. There is stuff you can purchase, um, a spray, which I'll link in the uh, description, but um, you can spray it on your wreath to help protect it against sun and water damage. I've personally never used it, but I've seen a lot of people use it before and it seems to work great. So maybe I need to get some of that. <laughs> my, my porch doesn't get wet because it's covered, but the sun just beats it. So, all right, so we're just moving along here. Just making lots of bubbles as we go. So hopefully you guys see how easy this is. We're just coming up, making our little bubbles, fluffing, and moving right along. This way is so much easier than stringing the whole roll of burlap through each um, wire wreath form because that way frays and it makes a ginormous mess and it also makes your wreath not as crisp. So these that look very crisp, these um, loops, they don't have any fraying or strains coming out. They just look really pretty. Um, when you do it the other way, you have a lot of mess and your burlap actually looks kind of messy, like it's older. Think of it like distressed um, when it's uh, done the other way where you string, you 
like basically string the whole entire roll of burlap through each section, making a bubble. Um, and that way also is very difficult to remove the burlap if you're ever wanting to reuse your wreath form um, or reuse the burlap to make a different wreath or if you messed up and you ran out and don't have enough to finish the wreath and you want to go back and make just smaller loops so you don't have to go back to the store. Um, don't do it that way. <laughs> do, the, do this way because I promise you just pull and it all comes out. Um, but it will not come out while it's just up on your door looking beautiful. I have made so many of these wreaths and I've never had one come undone. Typically I do uh, make them really tight where I'll have more um, bubbles coming up through them. Like I said, with like a three rows per um, section here. But I know that this 30 foot uh, strand won't make it all the way on this 20 inch wreath form. So I'm just doing two sets of three on each section. And it'll be just fine because I'm gonna put my bee on here. I may even add the flowers too, just to make it pretty. You can always come back and fluff any of these other sections of burlap. Right. We're almost done here. So this wreath really does not take a long time to make. You can whip these out pretty quickly, especially once you get the hang of how to make the loop and know the size that you're going for. That's probably the hardest thing for um, beginner wreath makers is just knowing uh, uh, the size to make your bubble and making sure that they're even along the way. So if you happen to run out of burlap along the way, all you have to do is grab another strand and start the process all over just like you did at the very beginning of the wreath, the very first thing you did. Just start all over. Again, don't worry about those tails because you will tuck them all in at the very end of your wreath. You do not need to worry about it. So if you have that problem where you do run out, it's okay, don't worry. You don't have to sew your strands together or anything of the sort. You will just keep on working, pretend like nothing happened, and you'll tuck everything at the very end. So I have had so many wreaths that I've run out of fabric or burlap along the way. And then you just easily Add in another strand and you cannot even tell. So we are almost done here. We just have two and a half sections because I have one more section to do here now. Left of the wreath and then we'll go ahead and get our B added and hang it on the door. Again, just always repeat the process. It just is so easy. You can do this and really have a conversation with somebody else during this whole wreath making process. It's not that hard. 
You don't have to think that hard. And wreaths are not supposed to be exactly perfect. They're supposed to have different dimension, you know, stuff like that. So don't fret, it's gonna be okay, even if you even have a little blemish. So see, I'm actually gonna run out here, and that's gonna be okay, because I have another little piece of burlap that I'm gonna use. So I was able to do one loop, just like that. I'm gonna leave it. Grab my second piece. We're just going to come right up through that middle, on that next one. Let my tail hang out, oops, hang out down there. going. And I'm going to show you how to tuck these tails at the very end so you don't even see them. But that is something that you do at the end. Like I said, do not worry about it along the way. There we go. So just like that, I added in a whole nother piece of burlap from a different um, spool or roll, whatever you want to call it. And you'll never even be able to tell at the end. So do this. Almost done. Just fluff. Always make sure you fluff. One more. Okay. Now before I cut it, I want to make sure that that looks full enough right there. And that I'm not going to need to stuff in. I think I'm just going to stuff one more little row right here. Just maybe one or two to pop back up. Just to make it nice and tight between my beginning and end. And then that way too, I won't even have any burlap really to cut off because I'm just gonna finish up this short little piece I had extra from a different wreath. So that's one thing, another tip, never throw away your extra pieces because you never know when you're gonna need it. Just like I needed it now. So, here we go. That is all done. Here is our wreath. Let me tuck that one down a little bit more. So, turn it so you guys can see how beautiful it looks. Nice and full. And then what I'm gonna do is flip it over. So now you'll see where the tail is. This tail I'm gonna go ahead and cut down a little bit because it's long. That was the end of the piece of fabric or burlap I just added. And all you do is take that and just tuck it around this wire. Tuck it up and pull it through. It does not have to be perfect. The whole thing doesn't have to come through. It's not gonna fall out, I promise. Just do that. Tuck it enough so it's secure, and you're good to go. This one, I don't even need to worry about, but I can. I can tuck it here, flip it, and that is all the all the other ones. The one that I, or uh, there should have only been two. Um, it's all gonna be perfect. So I just flip it back over, and I see how pretty the wreath looks. Now, what I like to do before I put my embellishments on is I like to hold my wreath up and make sure that I'm gonna put it in a spot that looks right. So sometimes a wreath will be a little more full on the bottom or the top or whatever. And I just like to hang it up because that's one thing, another tip, the wreath will always look different than what it looks like when it's laying flat. Once you hang it up on the wall, it, you're gonna see some imperfections, or things like that that you're gonna wanna change. So all right, now it's time to attach our letter. What we're going to do is take our floral wire, wrap it around this little hook on the letter. Just twist it a couple times. Really, there is no science behind this. It's just uh, however you can get it to attach. And I stick it through to the back side. I can flip this over here to show you guys. And then. The biggest thing is just making sure that it's gonna hang evenly, but I just take this extra wire and attach this to one of the wire rungs. Twist, make sure it's nice and secure so it doesn't come off. And voila, so it will hang and not fall off. Perfect, looks great. You can always just adjust it if you need to make it a little lower, higher, whatever, to make sure that your spacing is right. Once this is up on the door, it's gonna look great. 
So then you can also add in some pretty flowers. If you do that, my biggest trick is just going right through um, the wreath form. I don't even cut my stems usually. Just make them so they're about four inches long and then stick them in. And you just maneuver them and just make sure they're nice and tight. I actually took these flowers off of a different wreath I did before, for 4th of July. But we're getting ready to start school, so this will look pretty for our school colors. Put them in. Basically, you just weave them in wherever they will go, then fluff and you've got a beautiful wreath. So there you have it guys. Hope you guys like this tutorial. Please leave a comment to let me know what other wreaths you would like to make. I'll also leave links to the previous wreath tutorials I've done as well as all of the supplies that you need to make this wreath yourself. Bye guys, have a great day. Mm -hmm.